Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us here today. My name is Fabiana Bakini. I'm the executive director of the Canadian Premature Babies Foundation. Every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, I'm hosting Facebook Live, bringing researchers, clinicians, parents, and babies who were born preterm, who are now adults, into our Facebook Live to share the experiences, their research, the latest findings in neonatology, and also uh, answer questions parents have at this time, especially with the COVID-19. And today we are going to talk to this wonderful woman, Juliette uh, Kemp Heis. She is from the Netherlands. She was born preterm in 1980. And she's going to be here today sharing her story with us and her experience as a baby and growing up in school age and adulthood. Uh, Juliette uh, obtained her bachelor's degree in biochemistry and biotechnology at the Saxon University of Applied Sciences. She's a clinical research coordinator at Erasmus University Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Besides, she's self-employed as a strategic consultant. Juliette, thank you so much for joining us here today. Such a pleasure to have you here, sharing your experience. When I met you last year, I was blown away by your story and what growing up as a preemie led you to your future and what you do today. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me here, uh, Fabiana. I'm looking forward very much uh, talking to you. It's, it's, you. My, it's a big pleasure, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's wonderful. Julie, I want you to start just sharing a little bit of your story, how you came into this world 40 years ago. Yes, I was born very preterm with 28 weeks. It was uh, by spontaneous labor. My parents weren't really prepared at all for having me. And uh, when I was born, I already had a 10 months older brother. So we are very close to age and of course, very stressful period for my parents. So what do they tell you about that time in the NICU? How long were in the NICU and what was that journey for your mom? Yes, I was born in a regional hospital and uh, they couldn't take care of me for the very preterm born uh, baby. So they um, decided to transport me to another hospital and they really had difficulties finding a NICU who had a place for me. So they called several ones and luckily they found one, otherwise I would pass away. So, and they transported me via ambulance about 80 miles or 140 kilometers away from my parents. So, and my father accompanied me in the ambulance. So, and during the tra transport, uh, it was very tricky because they really had to uh, give me uh, a heart massage the, the whole time. Um, and they were really afraid that I would pass away during the transportation. But I didn't, so. <laughs> so you are here. So how I'm here. long, how long do you spend in the hospital? And do, does your mom and your dad share the stories with you? How was the NICU for them with a 10 month old baby at home? Yes, it's a totally different time 40 years ago, of course. I spent in the NICU in total uh, four months, three months in the uh, about 80 miles or 140 kilometers away from my parents. And the last month I spent at a different hospital, much closer to my parents. So, and in the 1980s, you had only one car. So they really had to, it was a struggle taking care of my brother, of course, who was uh, 10 months old. And then of course they had to visit the hospital to see me and to, 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 to be there for me. But in the 1980s, it wasn't, as nice as it is nowadays, they didn't really have kangaroo care. So, and my mother could hold me for the very first time when I was three and a half months old. So, totally different time back then. So the, the nice news certainly came a long way with that. Uh, yes. And we, because now we also know the impact of not having kangaroo care or the parent presence in the NICU. Um, but we're going to talk about that later because I, you have so uh, many stories to share with us and I'm so grateful uh, to hear them and share with our audience here. Uh, uh, Juliet, how your story influenced your life? Because for sure, your mom, you know, had to take a, 
you know, more care of you than your brother because you did have medical conditions coming home. So share with us, how was that look like for you? Yeah, of course, as a parent at that time, there wasn't an aftercare for parents, no uh, psychological support or any system for parents at that time. So they really had to find on their own how to do it. Uh, after I was discharged home for the very first time, I was four months old. And um, of course, I think it, the first year I had to go on and off visiting the hospital. And because I had feeding problems and lung problems a lot. But for my parents, they really tried to do their best, of course. I'm really grateful for them, how they guide me through life. And um, with no support system and what they both really try to do is not seeing me as a disabled person, but really as a person in uh, like complete person. So um, my mother really did spend a lot of time like hugging me, singing for me. Um, also, of course, for my brother, not only for me, but really as a mom, she really did of course, she heard the prognosis of um, very preterm children uh, could may have problems in development or social interaction or um, learning disabilities. And really what she did as a mother was trying to guide me and to help me to prevent I had those struggles, of course. And she raised me with a lot of love and I think it's good that he, she didn't really focus on, she lived more or less day by day instead of thinking about what the prognosis could be. And therefore it helped me in becoming the person I am now. Yeah, it's, she, she really did her best, they, they both did. And um, I think the best is what they did is just not to see me as a disabled person or not really being too anxious ab about what could happen in later life because of course they don't know mm -hmm. it was the prognosis was maybe i could have um uh, need special needs care special school system or um, um uh, more learning um, uh, disabilities and they're just focused on me, on how I develop day by day, instead of looking too much far into the future. I think that's how they cope with as parents. So I think yeah. that is a great strategy because we don't really know what's going to happen. No. And sometimes we hear all this prognosis and yes. what can happen to your child. Yeah. And we forget to celebrate that moment that we yeah. have with a child. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons I want to bring you to the Facebook Live, because for us parents who are very, either than I see you very early on uh, into that journey after discharge or in, in the early years of your child, you, we don't see that further ahead. Uh, you know, we don't see a grown up who was born preterm or who actually we might have met people, but they don't really share that you were born preterm. And bringing you here, it does give a hope to all of us parents that, you know, yes, we have a rough start. We might have a diagnosis. My son has cerebral palsy, which is a diagnosis that a parent never wants to hear. But nevertheless, my son is here, he's happy in his joy of our lives. And I'm sure you are the same to your parents and yeah. you bring joy to our community now just by being you and being here with us sharing your story. So I really grateful for that. But I want you to talk about what you said to me when we were chatting before that this rough start doesn't mean that you are unhappy no. and then you don't feel that you're a victim because you were born preterm no no i don't feel like a victim at all it's of course i had a, a, a rough start in life that's true but it doesn't really mean that i would not become a happy person so of course the the, the early start i had it it wasn't really the, the best start in life i could imagine of course and but it doesn't mean on the long run that you will stay um, like an ill baby or a, a, a sick baby or 
you really could achieve a lot, even if you are born very preterm, and even if you have um, like uh, some kind of disability due to being born preterm. It's really you could. I always mention you could, um, if you really want to achieve something in life, you should focus on it in a positive way, and and to see in what you have and rather than in what you don't have. So. I always try to see it in a positive way and um, focus on the good things instead of on the negative ones. So, yeah, yeah that's how that's I achieve correct. life. So, yeah, how I, I approach life. So, yeah. that is great, Juliette. And but also tell us about your career choice because that was also influenced by your rough starting life, by your being born so early. So. Tell us about your career, what you do now, and how engaged you are in this world of prematurity. Yes. Well, um, I had a lung disease, or I was diagnosed asthma when I was 26 years old, and it was quite um, that difficult to treat asthma. And uh, having had this experience in a lot of breathing issues, uh, I started in 2009, um, for the, at that time, it's now called the Lung Foundation of the Netherlands, but at that time it was called the Asthma Foundation in the Netherlands, and to volunteer. And I started in patient advisory boards, international on very large scale research projects focusing on severe asthma, because I wanted to provide my experience in life I had when I was diagnosed with difficulty to treat asthma and to use the experience I have in life and knowledge into helping others. And later on, I know I don't have asthma anymore. I have bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And therefore I switched in focusing on uh, the lung condition I have that was, um, uh, that, that is really related to being born very preterm. Pre and therefore I switched into um, um, becoming one of the, the uh, member of the chair committee of the Global Alliance for Newborn Care. So it's uh, really amazing to, to use my knowledge and my experience as someone who was born very preterm and uh, combined with my daily job experience as well and to helping others uh, and also for the needs for babies who are born very preterm or born too ill or born um, too early and also their family uh, members. Absolutely. Juliette, but you also told me that you are the first patient to go into this special clinic in the Netherlands. Yes. So tell us about it because I think that is a very unique program that a lot of other countries don't have it. Yes, it's uh, really happy. It is, there is uh, end of last year, a new outpatient clinic is established in the Netherlands at the Erasmus University Medical Center, which is also my employer, but uh, that's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And um, a new outpatient clinic was established, uh, especially for the ones who are born very preterm, who had had mechanical ventilation um, as a baby, just like me, and therefore have um, are more susceptible susceptible in developing a lung disease. And just the same as I have, I was previously diagnosed as having difficulty to treat asthma. And it happened by the end of last year, I was re-diagnosed and it turned out that I don't have asthma at all. So I'm really happy that we have this outpatient clinic who is following up the ones who are born very preterm and who are now adults and could now finally receive a proper care. And uh, I, for me, it was, um, I was already finding some kind of, or searching for some kind of adult lung physician who understands uh, lung health, uh, lung health in relation with, with born very preterm. And it was very difficult to find such adult lung physician. I'm really happy I found now a lung physician who understands lung health in relationship with being born very preterm and who could proper diagnose Absolutely. lung condition I have now. So 
This is so very important. So yes. I, so do you think every parent should always disclose to physicians, even when the child is teenager or older, that they were born preterm, that the issues they're facing now could be related to prematurity? That yes. seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, I think I would recommend it because uh, just like me, you live. With, I live with these lungs. I have. If I go back into medical file, I already was diagnosed with severe BPD when I was a baby. So I have this lung condition my whole life, mm -hmm. but somehow the diagnosis was not there anymore growing up. And what you, if you don't uh, mention you are born preterm and having like um, health issues or health complaints and you don't bring up this your own Sometimes there's a relationship with being born very preterm and having have these kind of uh, health issues. So I think it's good to bring this up to uh, when you are attending to a specialist and um, it's good to mention you are that you are born preterm yourself or either your parents, if you are a child, of course. So yeah. absolutely. And we also talk about using the same uh, information with the school system right because sometimes a child is in school now they're eight nine ten years old sometimes the kid is struggling in school and parents sometimes do not relate back to prematurity no so do you feel that we should tell the schools yes my child was born preemie we might have some small issues here or there that is related to prematurity i think it's good to mention it because they're your child could get easier, get um, um, more like special care. For example, I had a little bit more difficulties with writing when I was uh, six years old. And I think it wasn't really mentioned, but um, I had a little bit of problems with calculating um, by head. So um, I think it's good to mention it because your teacher could uh, give you a little bit of extra care in helping and to support you to learning like miles or learning um, the language properly or learning how to write properly instead of not mentioning. But what I want to, to also mention is that for myself, I didn't really like to have this label of being born preterm. My parents didn't really label me as born preterm, but I think it's good to mention it, but not to bring it like uh, having really like a label on your head because you don't want to feel different. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to feel different when I was a child. And um, yeah, I wanted, but did you, did you I wanted feel to different? fit in, so. <laughs> right. But did you feel different? Uh, if I look bit back, I think I was more like, I spoke to the ones, my classmates before. I, uh, like this year, I just contacted them to ask them uh, how they saw me when I was like six years, seven years old. And the reason why I did, because I was bullied a lot and I wanted to know why they did bully me. So I just approached them via Facebook and sent them a message. And I heard their answers back that I was more like, a, I wasn't a shy person, I was more timid. And um, therefore, they th thought I was a little bit different, I guess, or, yeah, it's, uh, I didn't feel different, but okay. maybe the other ones ar surrounding me thought that I was a little bit, yeah, different or not. I was more timid, timid okay. person, yeah. So let me, okay, but that could also be a, a a personality it's, trait. Yes, so many true, people who are not preterm, they are yeah. timid, they're shy, yeah, they don't true. have a lot of, uh, you know, socialization skills, or they just want to be on their own, which is yeah, true. right. Yeah. But I, we were chatting about mental health, and yeah. you, you talked to me about something that it really it hits my head when you talk about okay, how the pain can alter your behavior and your mental health growing up. Yeah. And we know a lot of pain, what the research is doing now, the neonatal pain, and how can they impact the, the, the child. Tell us about your mental health growing up as a child and as an adult. Is there any influence on that? 
Yes, I think uh, it's not really like mental health in, in, in like uh, having a depression or anything like this, but more mental health and I relate it to being born preterm, I guess. It's a mixture of feeling uh, because, because I was in the, in the incubator for like four months and um, uh, yeah, more or less separated from my parents because my mom could help me for the very first time when I was three and a half months old. And I have sometimes a feeling, and I call it, it's a little bit in between. It's a feeling, a mixture of feeling homesick and feeling sometimes lonely, but it's not loneliness because I am not a lonely person. And it's not really homesick because I don't have homesickness, but it's a similar kind of feeling. And the only thing I could relate it, this kind of feeling is because spending for many months in incubator without my parents. And I've spoken to the also other older preterm born adults, similar like my age, and they recognize this kind of feeling. So it's uh, not really I have a mental health uh, had this kind of issue, but it's uh, this feeling is like a mixture of homesickness and loneliness sometimes goes up and down. So. And without being feeling lonely and without having uh, a, a troubles with feeling homesick. So, but it's similar kind of feeling. That is so very interesting. We still it's have very so interesting. much I know. to learn. <laughs> and there is so much to, to, you know, to be researched, to learn about uh, prematurity and, and that kind of influence, right? Yes. That's there's so much focus on uh, all the morbidities and, you know, but sometimes you don't address the, the things that, you know, maybe we consider small, but they're not small, right? Because mm -hmm. that's your life and it's part of your life. But I'm so happy to hear those things from you. And I, and I know how much research you do yourself and you look for answers and you talk to people to really kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. This is so great, Juliet. Uh, so now I want you to tell us, like tell the parents who are watching us here today uh, or the clinicians, what would you like them to know? Yes, I will start with parents. Um, is follow the directions of your child instead of forcing, forcing them to be average or um, give your child the time to develop on their own speed instead of uh, elevating their speed to develop and it's as a parent you should follow the development of your child instead of the other way around and to support your child by doing this and um, let them develop in their own speed i think that's one of the best advice i could give especially for the ones who are born very preterm and uh, give them their space to develop on their own time instead of speeding everything up to, to be average. So I think it will give them less stress and it will ease your child. And um, I think that was, I think that's, that's, that's the, the one of the advice I could give to parents and live day by day instead of thinking about the uh, prognosis, uh, what's been told by physicians about having a very preterm child. So don't think about what will happen in five years or happen in 10 years or happen in the very long run in future, but just focus on your child day by day and celebrating the life you have with your own child and um, enjoying life with them instead of feeling anxious about the future yeah this is and, so beautiful yeah <laughs> i think it will help parents to spending time feeling anxious it will only hold you back instead of enjoying the moment you have with your own kids so absolutely and, um, for uh, physicians i think it's good to focus on uh, in my opinion, in my view, there should be uh, a longer follow-up period 
In the Netherlands, we have uh, guidelines that are mentioning to follow up children until they're eight years old. If I look back into my own youth and knowing that I uh, experienced more uh, difficulties of breeding starting at the age of 25, I would like to recommend to have a longer follow-up for the ones who are born very preterm. And for example, monitor them if they are doing pretty good, like every five years or every year or until they 21 years old and then have regular checkups depending on how their health status is at that moment. For example, for me, um, having a lung uh, condition, um, I think it would have been better that I was followed up much longer because it has took me like 13, 40, 14 years to find a, a lung physician who could, who understands lung health in relationship with born very preterm. And that it, I think if I look back and if I was followed up very longer into my childhood, my whole childhood into becoming uh, uh, adolescents and in becoming an adult, maybe I would have known sooner what was wrong with my lungs. Yeah, and so. maybe I could have received earlier the right care instead of now being 40 years old and now having the proper diagnosis. Absolutely. But Juliette, your lungs did not stop you from becoming an no. athlete because <laughs> I follow you on Facebook and you run and you do all these amazing uh, sports. And this is hope for all of us that you can try. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's what I'm, uh, my, um, um, how do you say it? it's my, um, of course, my lungs aren't really the best one I could imagine or want to have, but it's uh, your physical condition is not only your lungs, it's only also your strength of your muscles, also your strength of your heart. So, and I always, I love sports a lot. I, I started with sports like when I was five years old, six years old. It's really a, a big hobby for me to do. I, I like running, swimming, cycling, and uh, it really doesn't stop me having a lung disease and, um, not really doesn't stop me at all. It's just, of course, it's, I puzzle a lot how to achieve things. That's true. Because I have a lung condition. That's true. I have to puzzle a little bit more than someone who doesn't have a lung disease. But I think if you really want to um, uh, achieve things in sports, it's also possible having a lung condition. And sometimes maybe you have to work a little bit harder than, than someone else who doesn't have a lung disease. But it doesn't mean that your life ends <laughs> having a lung condition. So this is the, this is a strong will what premies. They are you are resilient, you are persistent, and you're a fighter from day one of life. And I see all of that in you, Juliette. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so I really want to thank you for joining us here today. And I hope I see you again next time on our Facebook Live. So thank you, Juliette. <laughs> you're welcome. And for all thank of you, you very much. Thank you. And for all of you watching us at home, uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. If you do have a suggestion uh, for us to do here on Facebook Live, please send us a, an email or make on the, your comments on the box below. And every Friday I have a Facebook Live 1 p.m. Eastern time. And in October, from October 26th to October 30th, I'll be hosting Facebook Live for a whole week, uh, starting at 12 o'clock is the Premi Health Talks. We are going to focus on lungs and RSV and flu, as it is a flu season in the uh, northern hemisphere of the, our planet. So a lot of the winter is coming, as well as a lot of uh, viruses will be around. And we're also going to talk about COVID-19 and the implications on children who are born preterm. So you can join and check our agenda for our events on our website. Canadian, canadianpremies.org so you can check Premi Health Talks from October 26th to October 30th and thank you and I see you next week have a lovely uh, long weekend and if you're in Canada happy Thanksgiving bye now <laughs>